Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world today. I welcome you to Wow What a Show. This is the live podcast outreach ministry of Rehoboth Institute of the Arts, a collective concept of artists working together to spread the gospel. However, the Lord will call us to do so working in tandem, working to support one another in prayer, etc. We are, of course, again, Rehoboth Institute of the Arts. We have a podcast site on Podbean. You can uh, search us out and find us there. And um, visit with us as often as you like. You can definitely look at all of the uh, episodes that we have uploaded over the years and enjoy some of the conversations that we've had that we have also enjoyed and benefited greatly uh, from. So definitely you're welcome. God is so good. And what we are doing now is exciting. Um, We started the reading of uh, Daniel last week, uh, Wednesday evening at eight, which we are regularly broadcasting at eight or podcasting, I should say, every Wednesday night. And uh, for the sake of our uh, series, which will include a study overview in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, we are uh, reading Daniel as a prelude to that because it is um, the, these two prophecies go together. And Daniel, really, of all the prophetic books, is um, very, very significant in last day's prophecy. And we had an excellent reading and uh, just a mini expose last week from our dearest uh, Anna, who uh, comes and is so thorough and so very uh, adept at what the Spirit of God is, is wanting us to know. Tonight, we will read Again, from Daniel, uh, Anna read from chapters 1 through 4, and uh, I will read this evening chapters 5 and 6. We're not going to do a lot of commenting on this, though it is a book that we could do some phenomenal uh, background information on, and we might come back to it. Uh, once we've gone through the book of the Revelation, it is so much in Daniel, really and truly. I'm I'm sorry now that I <laughs> I said we would just read it because uh, we we really should just take a moment to think on these matters, on these things, and let the Lord speak with us. However, since we've started in this way, we will continue, and definitely in the future, I know we will return to it. Well, I'm going to give a little quick recap. The title of the book is Daniel. The name Daniel means God is judge. And throughout the reading of this book, as Daniel sees more visions of the future, uh, he is uh, told that by the angels that visit with him, um, that uh, the angel Gabriel yeah, he is greatly beloved. God greatly loves Daniel because of his faithfulness. Daniel was faithful. And, you know, he wasn't faithful just uh, in the captivity. He was one of those young Hebrew uh, uh, gentlemen, young young men who was taken in captivity and placed in the king's court because of their um, their particular wisdom and their learnedness. They were very, very adept young men. And uh, the king, of course, was subduing Israel. And one of the ways that uh, he did so is by bringing others into the culture of the land, you know. And that's something we could really talk about. I won't get into it. But the title of this book is Daniel. And Daniel is the writer of the book. He recorded his Uh, the events of his life during the reign of the kings under which he served. And Israel, of course, is in captivity. God has allowed Israel to be taken um, because of, you know, their their extreme idolatry and sin 
they did not remain faithful. Not the kings of Israel did not. And so they were captured. However, they at this time, Jerusalem had not yet been destroyed. The, you know, the land had not just been uh, taken over, but uh, the people were ruled over now by this king, Nebuchadnezzar. And that's what we encountered in the first four chapters. And the amazing way that Daniel was able to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and um, help him actually to come to see that God is actually judge and that God is sovereign and that his reign was allowed by God. And Nebuchadnezzar actually did come to understand that. So we start tonight in chapter five. Uh, by the way, one other thing I want to, to mention is that Jesus Christ quotes from the book of Daniel and calls Daniel a prophet. So if Jesus recognized that Daniel is a prophet, we can be assured that Daniel is a prophet and that the words of a prophet must come to pass. And much of what has happened in the book of Daniel has come to pass. There's still some to come, which is why it is linked so well with the book of the Revelation, the prophecy of the revelation of Jesus Christ in his return and the final events of this world. So we begin tonight with prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. That sure word of prophecy is our hope. It is the layout of those things that shall come to pass as we continue to march towards eternity. We are so grateful, Lord, that you've given us a heart and an interest in it because it is written at the uh, end of the book of the Revelation. Blessed is he who reads the prophecy of the book. Blessed is he who reads. And so we want to read. We want to read it. We want to allow the Holy Spirit to speak back to us as we read and to in, enlarge our uh, expectation, open uh, somewhat our understanding, make us know that we are not serving a God who is not able to keep every promise and that he, for the sake of us who are saved in this world of chaos and you know, wars and rumors of wars and famine and disease and sickness and discord and discontent, all of that that comes from being in a fallen world, that God has had respect to us, for us, in giving us the hope before us, telling us, informing us. And he says that he tells his friends what he's doing. Isn't that something? We are the friends of God and we bless your name because it is so, Father. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Guide and direct the reading tonight. And Father, open our ears that we may hear what we've never heard before, that we may be imparted to by your spirit those things which build us up in the expectation of your return. And I ask you, Lord God, that there be any who listen either tonight or in the future as this broadcast is, is added to the list of others that we've done, that they too will be drawn to you because we are witnessing of your great salvation as we have received it. And we thank you for doing these things that we have put before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we are at uh, chapter 5 in the book of Daniel. And it is at chapter 5 that we realize the king has changed. So Daniel has now served under one king, Nebuchadnezzar. He is now serving under Nebuchadnezzar's son, as Nebuchadnezzar himself has departed. Um, and if you will, I mean, there are people who probably are expecting me to send an invitation to join the um, uh, podcast, but... I just uh, really don't have uh, always the wherewithal to do that in terms of time. So if if you want a fresh and I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. By all means, add uh, to the list 
anyone that you so choose. And uh, we will just move right along because it is for the um, list and people can listen when they want to, as a matter of fact. So here we go. We are now chapter five. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit in knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, the showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which are of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would slow, slay, and whom he would keep alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. 
But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and his writing was written. This writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, euphrasin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius, the Median, took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Daniel 6, chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which offereth not. 
Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou serves continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him in innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, and every ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then that King Darius, Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Hallelujah, glory. Father, your word is truly a blessing and truly blessed. Already an anointed word by thine own power and, and voice and hand. It is an amazing story that a dream tells Nebuchadnezzar his first demise and second. Absolutely. Yeah, um, this is amazing that the book of Daniel is absolutely, as you have said, honor. It is amazing. And as I read uh, earlier and prepared, you know, I listened also to an amazing and wonderful study Um which I had, you know, through the years studied the prophecies and they they truly are the foundational hope of every Christian believer. But I heard Dr. J. Vernon McGee says there's no way you can be a, a Christian and know and understand your faith without understanding and knowing the power and the meaning of prophecy. It undergirds everything. And I, at some point in my life, was so, oh my goodness, I just understand very little. But I wanted to eat it up because I 
hear in the prophetic words of God through his prophets. I hear the coming of Jesus Christ and his establishing the eternal place where we shall live in the absence of all that is so sad in the world. We will be in his presence and we will know him even as we are known it is written. And I believe with all my heart and wherever there is even a tiny minuscule speck of doubt, I ask God to deliver me from it. I believe, O oh Lord, that you will do just what you said you will do. And that there will be a union of those who love you and who want to be in your presence and who want to be in the presence of like believers. And those, Lord God, will reign with you as you have written in your word forever and ever. And those who've gone before shall be raised incorruptible, as shall we also be. O oh Lord God, we ask your mercy on the present condition of this world. It is only when we can really contemplate peace and you being the Prince of Peace and love, you being the God of love, O oh Lord, that we can understand the depth of the depravity in which we presently live and actually long for the hope of your eternal place of dwelling for all who have loved your appearing. Thank you for allowing us to read tonight. And in the reading, I hope you heard things that I heard that here is a man, Daniel, faithful before God in every way that he could be. It's even hard to imagine that Daniel was <laughs> ever outside. And yet when he prays, as we shall see later in the book, as he's fasting and praying, he recognizes the sin of men. And we are those people. We are not perfect in our way, but we long for the Lord. And we ask him to dwell in us and to just deliver us, crucify, show us how to crucify every area that blocks his permeated existence within us. We want to be filled to overflowing with the spirit of our living father, our God. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to read tonight. It is such a blessing. We will indeed continue tomorrow night again at 8 o'clock. I will read again. Oh, well, we'll have a guest reader. And by his grace, I hope that you will join us again if you are out there listening and that you will indeed continue with us as we prepare to receive from God's bounty through Dr. Larry Kilson uh, an exposition and an overview of the great book, The Revelation of Jesus Christ. And with that, to all of you again, well, at least to you, Fresh, and thank you so much for being here. I say thank you again and uh, join us as we uh, move forward. I hope you'll come tomorrow and I hope you have a very blessed evening, a very blessed morning if that's where you this morning where you are or uh, midday or afternoon where it is just be blessed in him and i just praise you absolutely have a great night god bless now